Hey everyone, Rusty here at Blue Robotics. Today I'm going to be showing you the basics behind the Thruster Commander, which you can use to control our thrusters and any servo-style PWM-controlled device like RC servos. Today we're going to be using it to control the T200 thruster. Uh, the T200 is a three-phase brushless motor, which means that unlike a lot of motors, you can't just connect it to power and expect it to spin. It needs an electronic speed controller to work. Uh, today we're going to be doing that with the basic ESC right here, uh, which is an electronic speed controller for any sensorless brushless uh, motor, but we're going to be using it on the T200. The basic ESC here has a couple wires coming off of it. It's got a red and black wire that's for power input to the speed controller. And then it's got three wires over here that connect to each of the three phases of the thruster. You can see there's matching colored wires on the thruster. And then last, we've got this small cable here with a little connector. This is the PWM input signal that's actually going to control the speed of that thruster. Uh, so we need a source for that signal. Uh, if, you're, if you've done RC hobbies before, you've probably used an RC radio receiver, which can provide a signal like that. If you're doing robotics, you're probably using an Arduino or other microcontroller to provide that signal. But today we're going to be using the Thruster Commander. It's a really simple option to just get set up and started and get things spinning right away. So let me show you a little bit more about what comes with the Thruster Commander. First off, we've got the main control board right here. Uh, it's got a power input up at the top left, a variety of inputs for the potentiometers and switches on the left, and then it's got four outputs uh, grouped into two right outputs and two left outputs on the right side of the board. Along with that comes a power cable for powering the thruster commander, a terminal block to help with wiring, an XT90 to spade connector which plugs into that terminal block and also interfaces with a battery with an XT connector, XT90 connector like our lithium ion battery here. Uh, two Euro style terminal blocks which help connecting the speed controller to the thruster. And of course these two potentiometers here which is what we're going to actually use as the signal source to control the speed of the thrusters. So let's get started. I'm going to clear some things away here and kind of walk through how we wire this up. Uh, first off, you need to give it power. There's a power input labeled up here at the top left corner of the device. Uh, and that's what we're going to use today. So I'm going to plug in this cable here. If you're using a speed controller that has a 5-volt input, or, or output rather, in its, in its signal plug, then you can just plug that into the right and that will also power the thruster commander. Uh, I'm going to connect this up to the terminal block. And I just want to point out, this terminal block has six positions so that you can connect quite a few things to it. And uh, the Thruster Commander comes with these four jumpers. I've already installed those here uh, to group this into three, uh, three connections on the left side for ground and three connections on the right side for power. So we'll connect up the power here first. Okay, next we need to connect up the battery input. So again, we're gonna use this, this XT90 to spade adapter, making sure that we connect the red to the same side and the black to the same side as we did on that first connection. All right, then we need to connect up the speed controller. I'm gonna do that up here on the same side, again, matching up red and black. Okay, we've got all of the power connected up here now. Let's just double check that all the blacks and all the reds are grouped together uh, and we don't have any of those mixed up. Last, we need to connect the thruster wires to the speed controller wires. I'm gonna do that with this little uh, Euro terminal block right here. Uh, I'm gonna connect up the wires matching blue, blue to blue, green to green, white to white, but you don't actually have to do that when you're connecting a brushless motor. Uh, they will the wires can be connected in any orientation. However, if you change any two wires once it's connected up, it's going to reverse the direction that the thruster is rotating. So just keep that in mind. Next, we need to connect that signal from the speed controller to one of the outputs of the thruster commander. Since we just have one thruster connected today, I'm just gonna connect it to the top output, which is labeled right output. You can see right under that, it's labeled ground. From the right to left, it's labeled ground, five volt, and signal. We wanna make sure the black wire is connected to ground and the white wire is connected to signal, like so, with the white wire on the left. 
And then after that, we're gonna connect a potentiometer. I'm just gonna use one of them today, but I do wanna show you how those potentiometer inputs work as well. Um, first up, there's at the top, there's an input that says switch, and it says on off next to that. There's a blue jumper pre-installed in that spot. Uh, that enables the output. So if you take that jumper off, it's going to disable the output. And similarly, you can connect a switch to that input. We don't have one provided in the kit, but if you'd like to control the thruster just by turning it on and off to whatever speed the potentiometers are set to, then you can connect a switch up to that input. By default, that jumper will just keep it enabled all of the time. Underneath that are four inputs for the potentiometers. There are really three ways to control the thrusters that are connected to this. If you want all four outputs to output the same signal, you can connect a potentiometer up to the speed input right here, and it will just control the speed of all four uh, thruster outputs at the same time. If you want to control the left and right sides individually, then you can connect up a potentiometer to the right in and one to the left in, and of course, the right in potentiometer will control the right outputs, left in potentiometer will control the left outputs. And then last, if you've got a vehicle like a stand-up paddleboard or something else that you want to steer with two sets of thrusters on the left, mounted on the left and right, you can use the speed and steering inputs. So there, speed will control the overall, uh, the overall output power of the four thrusters, and steering will control the differential power between the left and right sides so that you can steer left and right. All of these potentiometer inputs are reversible, so if you notice that the steering is working in the wrong direction, you can unplug that potentiometer and just plug it in in reverse to switch that around. Uh, the output signals to the thrusters are not reversible, so make sure those stay the way they are. Uh, today we've just got this one thruster, so I'm going to plug my potentiometer into the speed input, which will just control all four outputs. And then the potentiometer itself has a center detent, meaning that when it's centered, you feel a little click, and then you can rotate it left or right from there, but it's easy to tell when you're in the center. That center point is what's going to give the thruster a stop signal, which is also the signal we need to send it to initialize. If I power up the system with that potentiometer off to one side, either left, left or right, it's not going to initialize the thruster and it's not going to spin until we return the potentiometer back to the centered position. So with that, let's plug in a battery and see if it works. All right, that's a good sound. That was the sound of a thruster initializing. And let's just check here. So rotate this a little bit. And there we go, thrusters rotating. Again in the other direction. Looks good. That's it. Uh, keep in mind that the thrusters aren't meant to be run in air for very long. They use water to lubricate the bearings inside, so just make sure you run them at low speed and not for very long when you're testing. All of this is just a basic setup to get you started with the thruster commander, but you're welcome to change things. You can mount the thruster commander in a Pelican case and put it on a stand-up paddleboard. You can change the lengths of these wires. You can use different, uh, different potentiometers besides the ones that are included with it. Uh, there's a lot of options for flexibility here to help you finish your project. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and see you next time.